Hello, and welcome to another edition of Conversation with a Socialist. I am here with, um, oh, I'm so sorry, I, I forget your name. Marsha Squire. Okay, and you are running in uh, Michigan, is that right? Yes, for U.S. Senate. And uh, what, uh, U.S. Senate, okay, that doesn't require a uh, district, it's just, that's U.S. Senate. Who are you, uh, uh, who, who are you facing in, in November? I'm facing the incumbent, which is a Democrat, uh, Gary Peters, and then also the Republican challenger, which is John James. Mm. And there's two other candidates uh, as well, a U.S. taxpayers mm -hmm. and a uh, natural law party candidate. Oh, I see. Uh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I had to put my phone on mute, on mute there. Um, Sorry, transparency. Oh. I, I don't edit anything, so if I if I mess up, I mess up. So <laughs> that, that, that's how I do it. As part of the part goes. Um, uh, so I think I saw that you have uh, ran before. Yes, this is my third uh, race. Uh, I ran in. I ran for U.S. House in 2016 in Michigan's 14th district, and for U.S. Senate in 2018 um, against a different Democrat incumbent. Oh, okay. Uh, what is your platform? My, what is my platform? Yes. It's, you know, the pretty standard Green Party platform, which for those who might be watching or unfamiliar, um, it's essentially like a left-leaning libertarian party, you know, because we believe in like, uh, you know, we're not an auth authoritarian party, mm -hmm. you know, but we're, you know, left-wing in terms of um, social, you know, things as well as um, fiscally. Mm. And uh, what is uh, what is going on in Michigan that uh, that so many, I, I, it seems like I, I'm uh, gladly uh, uh, interviewing a lot of Mich uh, Michigan uh, um, people that are, are running. Uh, Amy Slipper, yourself, um, it's just a, quite a few, uh, Melissa, uh, Melissa Noel Lambert, um, and yeah, a few as part of the parkas, and I like doing it. But I mean, there are a lot of greens that seems like running Michigan, running California, and places of that nature. Um, and you guys are uh, you guys all you guys are all on the same platform, which is good and consistent. Um, what is the difference between uh, the Democrat and the Green Party in, in this case? So. The Democrats are the authoritarian left and the Green Party is a libertarian left. So while we agree on like social issues, our solutions are a bit different. You know, the Democrats are more like, we're going to tell you what to do. Whereas the Green Party is a lot and that's authoritarian in nature, you know, and um, the Green Party is decentralized in nature which is on purpose, you know, because we believe in autonomy and personal rights and civil, civil liberties um, from a more autonomous perspective than like an authoritarian left. Okay, so you would categorize the Green Party as kind of leftist version of libertarians. Yeah, if, you, if you've ever seen that quadrant before um, where it kind of puts people on a plot of where they are on the axis of a grid and you know there you've got the four different colors authoritarian is the top which is democrats and republicans libertarian is the bottom which is greens and libertarians left and right mm. also like working class party or working families party would be like a left leftist party you know um but yeah you can be left um, socially or left, you know, it depends on what kind of left we're talking about. You yeah. know, the, the Democrats are the authoritarian left. Mm. Okay. So, all right. So it, it, it it's an interesting, uh, it, it's just interesting dynamic you, you place in there, the, uh, the libertarian portion, because I, this whole time I, as I was looking at Howie Hawkins and other candidates for the Green Party, I was looking at them as more of the uh, left, but maybe a smidgen because of the gun rights part uh, of, but not, I, I wouldn't categorize them as libertarians necessarily since it's more or less going with the, the libertarians wouldn't, wouldn't go for like the um, the workers' bill of rights and other things than Howie Hawkins, 
um, and other Green Party members have uh, have said they they are for. I, I don't I don't see the, the Libertarians are in in my view um, kind of the left version of the Republicans. And that, as far, I mean I could be wrong about that, but I'm I'm still fairly new to the whole political scene. But um, yeah, learning as I go, that's why I'm, I'm that's why I'm more or less um, I affiliate myself with more of a socialist platform in regards to uh, policies. Yeah, libertarians. Um, so they believe in like civil liberties too. So I can get along with libertarian, the libertarian party, on things like being pro-choice and anti-war, you know, and pro-cannabis. You know, the the difference is like I also support the social safety nets and getting corporate money out of politics. You know, they don't support, they're more like anarchists in a way, like they don't like statism altogether. They don't want regulation in business. Whereas I feel like we're in like a state of hyper capitalism and we need to rein in big business. You know, there's the Libertarian Party is funded by the Koch brothers, you know, so they definitely aren't interested in getting that corporate money out of politics. You know, and that's more of a right-wing ideology, you know, when it comes to preserving the status quo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the very few things that I, I have I recently learned, I didn't know this until now, uh, that was uh, Medicare Part D, I think it is, um, which was, which was uh, introduced and, and, uh, and put in legislation in uh, the early 70s, uh, states that Medicare cannot... Um, to not negotiate drug prices, is that right? Do you know? What what was that? Uh, Medicare Part D. Uh, I'm sorry. Medicare Part D. Medicare Part D. Yeah, uh, in in, okay. his, in his legislation language states that it uh, Medicare cannot uh, negotiate with pharmaceutical industry. You know, taking the taking the government out of the process of that. That I mean, um, I, I I was saying that I, I'm saying this because. A lot of other uh, candidates are saying that they want to lower prescription drugs, but you can't lower prescription drugs unless you rewrite that piece of legislation. But nobody's really talking about rewriting the, the being precise as far as rewriting a legislation um, piece. So I'm, I'm, I, I wanted to go ahead. Although I agree with the importance of some prescriptions, I'm sure we can all agree that a lot of us are over-medicated um, with things that could be treated homeopathically. Mm -hmm. So I think before, you know, and that is a complicated issue to be able to fix the drug prices. You know, it's, it's a lot of red tape to get through. So I think that the first thing that we could do that would be a lot easier is to federally legalize cannabis because I feel that cannabis it's, and hemp products could really go a long way. I mean, we could be using hemp-based, uh, hemp even plastic for our prescription bottles. And, you know, that would, that would be helpful to the pharmaceutical industry and to the environment. And then also cannabis itself is a great treatment that can be easily accessed in your own garden or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, so it would bring the cost of, of certain individuals' health care down because they would no longer need certain prescriptions that they could use cannabis instead to treat their um, afflictions or CBD oil or whatever. You know, so uh, I'd like to um, at least start with that, you know, and get into more preventative care because I don't just think that cannabis can treat things. It can also prevent cancer and other ailments, you know, when used as a as a daily supplement, so to speak. You know, it's a, um, definitely something that we could use a couple of years doing, you know, just to see where we level off, where we would need those prescriptions. And it would actually force the pharmaceutical industry to be competitive with the cannabis industry. Mm. You know, because then they're gonna have to come up with a reason why you need to take this pill over this cannabis. Yeah, no, that, no that's true, definitely. Um, now, uh, what is the stature or status of marijuana in Michigan? Is it completely legal or? Michigan, um, recent, Michigan has had medical uh, prescriptions since 2009. We voted in 2008 for that. 
And then in 2018, 10 years later, we voted to, uh, recreational legalization for anyone over 21. Um, and there's like an excise tax involved, but um, yeah, essentially you don't no longer need a prescription as long as you're over 21. You still with me? Oh. Oh shit, that's me. God damn it. You fucking kidding me. All right, we're back. Yeah, that was something happened on my part. I'm not sure what it was, but yeah, apparently uh, I got cut off. Right. Like, Can't be talking about these crazy, uh, you know, awesome ideas. <laughs> the radical left. <laughs> uh, I've, this my happened. generation, we used to use that word radical, and it's a good word yeah. from my day. <laughs> so. To me, calling people the radical left, I'm, I take it as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Well, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if this has happened, that's happened to me before. I was talking with um, a Claudia Miller from the SPUSA and uh, I think somewhere in Carolina, I can't remember which, uh, uh, which part, but it cut off and I was able to get back online, uh, but the but. I think parts of the interview was uh, was not saved, so I'm not sure how this is going to happen. Uh, it's recording, so maybe you got, maybe got salvaged. Who knows? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, st I mean, I didn't talk while it was stopped recording, so hopefully it just skips right to the next part. I yeah. didn't continue talking. Yeah, no. Uh, basically, uh, after that happened, I stopped the previous recording I was doing. Now I'm recording back, so... For those who are wondering, we have, right. I had a technical difficulty. My Wi-Fi spazzed down on my butt, so we're back. We're back again. I apologize for that. Um, now, let's see. Now, you said that in Michigan, uh, uh, medical marijuana and um, recreational marijuana is legal uh, at 21 years and older, right? Correct. And is there any? Um, cross-border uh, purchases uh, allowed? Like you, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Okay, well, I was... Just, I'm not I, sure. I was wondering because sometimes I partake in, the, in, in that myself, and it would be nice to know if, uh, say, if I need to go to a different state and can legally go to a different state, uh, I know which state to go to. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I was asking. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to take care of that on the federal level, though. I don't want you to have to worry about that. You know, you should Absolutely. be able to access it uh, right in your own garden, you know, or your neighbors or whatever, your friend, your, you know, your corner store. Yeah, exactly. It needs to be more accessible. It's a lot. It's a life saving medication and, and hemp products could save the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we really need to, you know, there's a lot of environmental positive in impact that we can use with hemp products. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what what have you done within the community that uh, may have uh, bolstered your chances of winning? So, running previously, I I believe has helped me um, get uh, increase my name recognition. Mm -hmm. um, the last couple of years, you know, because I've been in the in the trenches for four years now. Um, making a name for myself from just a nobody, just a, you know, a housewife and a mom mm -hmm. into, you know, being a, one of the lead political voices of the Green Party of Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that does help um, for sure. I, I recently was polling at 4%. Uh, last time I only got 1% of the vote. So that's pretty encouraging that at the end of August, I was polling at 4%. Um, it didn't, I haven't put a lot of money into the campaign, especially at that point. Um, I was still getting my, my promotional items delivered to my house. Um, so I didn't even have any yard signs out or any t-shirts or anything out yet. And I'm already polling at 4%, mm. you know, with 
all the questionnaires just getting submitted, you know, to like League of Women's Voters and iVoter Guide and Ballotpedia. That's all going out now. So I'm pretty hopeful that, you know, I've got, I got a good um, kind of like head start on that stuff. I think I saw a uh, commercial of sorts with, with you on YouTube uh, earlier today or yesterday. Uh, you saying that uh, you want to win with the least amount of money put in, in, into a campaign, or I think it was some sad effect. I think that was, maybe I was back in 2018, so maybe, <laughs> I don't know if that was a recent one or not. Yeah, that was a, that was a goal I started in uh, 2018. I want to break the Guinness Book of World Records for the least amount of money raised for a U.S. Senate win. As a Green Party candidate, I'd be, you know, uh, if I was the only Green elected this year, I'd be the first Green ever to be elected to higher office in the United States. I'd be already making history. And just because of the simple fact that you don't, Greens don't take PAC money, super PAC money, or corporate money, um, I'm way underperforming my opponents, you know, that are out raising me millions to one. Last time, the two of them, my first and second place opponents raised 28 million combined to my $4,000. I raised $4,100 last time. So if I were to win, it would be on small individual donations, um, there's this uh, little law, the FEC regulations about once you raise $5,000, that's when you have to file with the FEC and form a committee and do all the paperwork and submit all your, you know, your book work. Um, but if you raise less than $5,000, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> mm. You can, you can, you know, you can just do it. You know, you don't have staff, you know, you gotta, you gotta make budget cuts, obviously. I don't have money for like a commercial on television, you know, but the money that I do raise goes directly towards the purchase of promotional items that turn into free advertising, whether it be in someone's yard or on their back because they're wearing my shirt, you know, so, um, so yeah. I'm trying to strike a deal with uh, the Green Party as a whole. Um, I'm trying to get sponsorship uh, and I'm only charging like just the price of support per month, like 90 cents, but that would have to be like all the, uh, all the green members as far as the park goes, like uh, only 90 cents a month for like really cheap sponsorship as far as that park goes and it, get, and it, it gets names out, but uh, I haven't heard anything yet, but uh, I think the price has to go to like steering committees and all that stuff. And I interviewed um, Colette uh, Jennings yesterday of Arizona, who apparently is on their uh, steering committee. And I offered the idea to her, and who knows what may happen as far as that goes. But again, just be, just being transparent as far as I can be on that one. So uh, anyway, see, uh, has have, have you guys got much help from the National Green Party? Um, actually, that's a that's a that's a very poignant question. Um, they just had their they had an application process where you could apply to be. Um, like a nationally promoted candidate. Mm -hmm. And apparently about 50 people applied. There was only going to be about five chosen to receive some funding, um, 500 to a thousand dollars. It wasn't even anything like a lot of money for like a race um, in terms of like the duopoly for the green party. That's great money, you know, but I was not selected. I got my, e my rejection email this past week. Um, so no, um, I was actually a 2016 national delegate for Jill Stein in Houston, and I was recently also a 2020 delegate for Jesse Ventura from Michigan. We awarded him four delegates this year, and I got to be one of them. And that was kind of a debacle. Um, so I don't know if maybe um, it was just there was, a, you know, too many candidates to pick from or it was some Howie people that didn't really like the fact that I was a Jesse Venture delegate, you know, I may never know, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. It wasn't a lot of money to begin with. So yeah. I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, so, we're, we're, so you basically, you, you're, you were saying that they, in a way, auction, in a way to a certain degree in the, in the auction, auctionary of sorts, 
uh, picked the, who they want to uh, endorse pretty much. And five people from Michigan were, was it, am I right about that? Five people from Michigan were put in that? Oh, five, five people across the whole country. You was, and everyone's in, everyone's endorsed, but they were picking five people across the country to promote. Wow. That's, that's so yeah, you can get selected. But one of the things I really like about the Green Party is that autonomy. Like we were talking earlier about the libertarian um, mindset is, you know, it, essentially I see the Green Party as a PAC, right? It's a political action committee. Um, that's actually its own party now, you know? And so I don't mind not taking PAC money from even my own party because it affords me even more autonomy within my own campaign. But I don't have to do what the Green Party tells me to do. I consider myself an independent that supports the Green Party platform and so therefore is a member so that I can help grow the party because I just think it deserves to be grown. It's the fourth biggest party and it's the only non-corporate party. So, Speaking you know, of that's where I'm putting my time and effort, but well, I'm like an independent contractor. I'm free to leave whenever I want if, if I so choose, you know. Well, that's good, yeah. Uh, by the way, speaking of Jess Matera, have you, uh, uh, maybe you should go seek his uh, endorsement if uh, if that was available. Jesse? Yes. That might, that might give you a boost. Yeah, uh, that would be really good. Um, you know, I'm not, that's, the, I'm going to have to write that down. I'm not sure. He was recently in the movement for a people's party. So I don't know um, if I would get a yes, but I guess the worst I could get is a no, you know. I was on his delegate acquisition team and I became a delegate myself. So yeah, um, I would, that's a good idea. I should, I should send him a message. The last I checked, he was, uh, didn't he uh, fill out an application to become a Green Party, uh, Green Party member in, uh, in uh, Minnesota? Yeah, he is a Green Party member in Minnesota. Okay. Well, he then, he, then he did not. He is not running for president. No, 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 no. But but he did join the party. Yes, he that, did that, join the party. That, that would make a little bit more sense if he were to, since he is an independent-minded politician, really, uh, for him to endorse another uh, independent politician for the Green Party. I mean. It's, this is the only part that I had, part I've, I've ever heard of that actually had openly independent Green Party members. Like Lisa from Maine, she's an independent Green. Uh, you're an independent Green. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure who else is an independent okay. Green, but I mean, that, that, all that makes sense to do as far as the part goes, but that's just my point of view. Yeah, there's like the Natural Law Party is essentially like an independent party where independents run. You know, and like that's, you know, when you're an independent, I think in terms of I'm not a Democrat or a Republican, yeah. right? And actually, I never was. Mm -hmm. Michigan has open primaries, so I was never a member of any party. That's why I call myself an independent, because mm -hmm. I never went to any Democrat or Republican meetings. I never was involved anything other than as a voter. Yeah, yeah. And um, so the being a you know, in order to run as an independent in Michigan, it's actually twice as hard as a Democrat or Republican. But to run as a third party, it's like a hundred times easier. All you do is a state nominating convention, and it's about 30 votes that can put you on the ballot instead of 15,000 signatures or 30,000 signatures as an independent. So it really, it's, it's a lot easier way to gain ballot access here in Michigan um, is to run as a minor party candidate. Um, just it's it's harder to win, obviously, but um, we do have we do have some winners further down the ballot. 2016, we had five winners in the Green Party in Michigan alone. Oh, we yeah. ran about 36 candidates. What you may not realize is I'm one of the very few that do what I call roll calls, and I go to the Green Party dot election and I call out the upcoming primaries and upcoming elections that have that are involved with Green Party and I name them all off. In fact, a couple of them, I, I, that's how I got interviews. And I also read out people who've won. I don't read the ones that have lost, but I, I've, I've, I have read the ones that have won. And so far, last I checked, just this year alone, I think uh, about 106 have won, I think. 
out of what uh, we're in our ninth month right now and we have another what 45 that are going for state local and federal uh offices in november i say we have a pretty good shot in fact i think we i don't know if this was but i think more greens have one office this year than the dsa i may be wrong about that but that's why that, that's why i'm thinking because a lot of them have won through uh, the primaries, but not necessarily have actually won the office. So we'll have to find out in November. Yeah, and the DSA isn't an actual party. They endorse candidates of other parties. Yeah, no, I was referring to the, uh, yeah, the DSA, uh, there's only one famous socialist alternative member, and that's Sawan in Seattle, who is facing her own right. uh, thing going on right now. Um, and I'm, Right. My, the point of uh, the point of my conversation with the socialists is I'm I speak with everybody that's on the socialist left or left period. They I, I don't uh, interview people like um, DNC related progressives. Those those kind of people I, I won't give a time of day because they're with the uh, with the DNC. And I won't uh, interview um, right. uh, straight up libertarians because they're more of a Republican in my, in my view. And I was curious how right. uh, interview Republicans. So I stick to the the socialist, uh, the far left, you know, people like that. So, right. Anyway. Yeah, one of the things that I, it bothers me with the low information voters is that they don't even know the difference in the terms. You know, I appreciate that you know what you're talking about uh, with your words because. People honestly think that socialism equals communism, equals Nazism, equals fascism. They just equals progressivism. They just throw words around like well, a whole world word salad thinking that they're making sense. And well, the, I catch myself asking people, you know, if they own a dictionary and maybe okay. they should crack it open once in a while before they start using words they don't understand. It's, yeah. it's frustrating, you know. I appreciate that you that you know, you know, all the different types of leftists and the different types of right wingers, you know. Well, yeah, thank you. As far as the part goes, uh, I have. I uh, the show used to be called uh, Green Autism Progressive. I do have autism, so I let the obsession part of my brain go into what the actual definitions are as a communist and, and a socialist. And then I look back at what Marxist was. Marxist was a, he, you know, he didn't believe in class, he didn't believe in um, workers to have to overly work for money or whatever commodities per day. Socialism is basically a work uh, uh, oriented uh, economic theory, whereas the communist is based on co ops and all that within the community that looms out into the general public. At least that's how I understood it anyway. Right now we have a capitalistic, socialism society but it's mainly on the capitalist side of it because they're the ones who control everything whereas we should be actually having a socialism mixed with capitalism because capitalism does actually have the opportunities of business and otherwise socialism is there to make sure that there's a safety net uh, all of that is basically has uh, the difference between the two is contract versus statute if it's all within a statute it makes it easier or harder actually for populists to reverse it, whereas in contracts, they can manipulate the wording in it. At least that's how, at least that's how I uh, interpret it anyway. Yeah, I, I, I give them it in a nutshell, you know, capitalism is private owned, uh, socialism is public owned, you know, uh, worker owned, and then, you know, gov uh, communism is like government mandated, you know, like you said, mm -hmm. like the mandate versus the contract, you know, so um and we do kind of live in a hybrid of all but i yeah like we're in a hyper capitalistic state because they have the the most power right now you know it's top heavy yeah and that all i mean it the housing market and all, and all that became more unsustainable because of the uh, the repeal of the glass steagall and because everything was combined into one market uh market sharing of companies you know the housing market the fiscal market you name it that basically got intertwined together to make it easier for speculation to happen within the market system 
So when you do that, you spend, right. other, but you, when you do that, banks tend to spend other people's money uh, because it's federal, because it's a federal guarantee payback. So if they mess up, they have to go to the government and say, we messed up here, could you, you know, pay us to make sure that these things are back to where it was? Well, because everything is so uh, unequal in regards to uh, wages per hour and taxes and other things of that nature, then people like myself, yourself, uh, we're still at the bottom overall, I mean, as far as just fiscally, I mean. So now we actually have to get right. enough people within the federal government to reverse that and make it more fair for a marketplace as well as the economy. If, if, you, right. if you got what I said there. Yeah, I think we should have like a, uh, you know, a decentralized capitalist system where we could have a promote small businesses and give the small business owners of like 50 or less employees the most tax breaks. And then the more employees you have, including 1099 independent contractors and all those other fancy ways the way they have of getting around employ actual employees, um, you know, the bigger your company is, the more the less tax breaks you have and the less incentives you have because you know you've got you know mom and pop shops that are struggling to pay their employees a living wage and it's also you know and turn a profit but then you've got companies like walmart whose whose employees are in government assistance even though they clearly could be afford afford to pay their employees a livable wage yeah. you know so it would encourage businesses to be small yet profitable you know if we did like a reverse tiered not you know like not an income tax change but like a, you know a business tax change yeah. i think it all i think it all basically combines with the fact that big corporations are able to get the bailouts pay them pay themselves more hire or lay off employees and put more money into their stock buybacks to make their company profile a bit more up, you know, in, uh, inflating the price where since there's not much going on in regards to the market, you know, consumerism, uh, consumers aren't able to go out and actually purchase things at a higher volume. They have to then go and purchase their own stocks and uh, stock and make sure the price go up when they go to hell, they are able to easily sell them at a higher price and then repurchase them at a lower price. Keeping the keeping their stock options up there and uh, not a organic way of doing it. That's what happened, right. that's what overall happened to the uh, to the stock market. That's what overall, ha overall happened to just pretty much any market that was affected in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. And then you had the big banks go through right. uh, Bush and who couldn't pass anything. Then you had Obama who was able to pass everything. That was more of a Republican or middle of the ground Republican, middle of the ground Democrat. But he plays, but he puts himself as a, a progressive. But progressive is just a, another version of saying like a more of a conservative um, socialist. I guess, I guess. Actually, yeah, the the original progressive era of a hundred years ago was a lot of um, middle class Republicans originally. Yeah. Um, the, uh, and the they, it's just based. And there was a lot of controversy back then too as to what what was more important was women's suffrage or direct election of senators or recalls ballot initiatives all that stuff that the progressive era accomplished it was all of you know it's like herding cats as to what's you know the biggest priority yeah. but progressivism as at its root is about more direct democracy as opposed to like representative democracy yeah. it's about the regular person having a say and in the rural, you know, uh, middle class farm Republican community back then, you know, that was that that was, you know, their issues back then, you know, so, you know, but a lot of people don't uh, know what progressivism is or how it even the progressive era or any of that stuff, they, you know, they, that's another word that they just throw around or m yeah. mislabel themselves so that people that like progressives um, you know, might be a little more biased towards somebody like a Barack Obama who just let Citigroup pick his entire cabinet after he he didn't take the big money in the primary, but yeah. he um, he certainly took it in the general, and you know it was it showed you know once he became president exactly you know who who whose interests he was really looking out for. Exactly. Yeah. The 
I, 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 uh, I look at uh, him and Joe Biden as basically Biden was there to get the white support while Obama was going for the black support. Now, Biden is going for the white support and yeah. Molly Harris is going for the African American support. Uh, but I don't think she's right. going to, I don't think she's going to begin it, me personally anyway, but I don't know. Um, I think that since Howie Hawkins is on, I, last I checked, 31 ballots, and well, 31 states, I should say, uh, ballot access, and quite a few uh, grains are running uh, for state, local, and uh, federal elections. I think the Green Party has a decent chance of winning quite a few seats, I think, uh, just based on messaging that has been not only by the name with Bernie Sanders, but also picked up by, by Howie Hawkins and the Green Party. So I suspect right. the Green Party is going to have a decent night as far as the part goes. It's not going to be uh, reported. I'll be doing that. Right. So, and I'll be happy to be doing that. Anyway, uh, we're getting close to the end of time. Uh, is there any place where people could donate money to? Yeah, um, I have a link at crowdpack.com. Uh, you can find me there. It's a pretty user-friendly site. You can search by state and race. Um, but the title of my campaign, or even my name, the title of my campaign is um, uh, non pro peace non corporate non corporatist pro peace advocate for U.S. Senate. Um, so if you look up some of those key terms, you know some of those key platform ideals, you'll find me. Um, and more specifically by race, but yeah, you can uh, donate there. Um, and if you're in Michigan, um, you know, and if you can't donate, there's also an endorse button there. So, if, you know, if you can't donate, you're more than welcome to click on endorse and leave a statement or paragraph as to why you would endorse my campaign. So anyone else visiting the site can, can read those, um, testimonials mm -hmm. of people that support my campaign. Right and you can find me on YouTube, a lot of the other, uh, independent media that has interviewed me is on YouTube because I do support a new fourth estate, you know, um, the five people that own all the major networks are not of interest to me. You know, we need to promote each other. So yeah. um, the spot immunity is where you can find me, you know, on, on YouTube and Facebook and, and places like that, you know, because we got we got to build everything from the ground up all over again. We can't rely on those corrupt media sources either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, are you? Do you and the rest of the uh, Michigan Greens have any uh, event, Zoom events or Facebook Live events happening coming soon? Um. Actually, yeah. Our state uh, our state membership meeting is coming up October tenth. Um, from nine to five, I believe it's on a Saturday. Okay. Now, is, that, is that open to the public? Or? From, what's that? Is that open to uh, open? Yes, uh, it's a Zoom meeting, and, and you can find that on migreenparty.org. Okay. And then I I'm going to be on a candidate forum on Monday the fifth and Tuesday the sixth. Hmm. Um, the one on Monday is going to be in the Wyoming Kentwood area, which is near Grand Rapids, um, and that's an in-person forum um, that will be broadcast. And then also there's the one, the next day is in the Ironwood, like Northwest Upper Peninsula area near the Wisconsin border. Mm. There is gonna be a, uh, a Zoom forum up there with multiple levels of candidates. Okay. So, uh, okay, that sounds good. And uh, I'm glad you're on today. I'm hoping that we'll be able to get together again in a month or so to, to See how things are going for you. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm headed off to Kalamazoo tomorrow to do a three minute recorded statement with the public me media network there in Kalamazoo that they're gonna be broadcasting. So, you know, I really appreciate these um, corporations, organizations, whatever you wanna call them that reach out to the non-duopoly candidates, um, even like the iVoter Guide and League of Women's Voters um, publications like that. Um, I really appreciate those, those types of organizations that help, you know, us smaller money candidates get out the word in, you know, some traditional ways, you know, so yeah. just a quick shout out to those guys, you know, I appreciate them too. That's good. I'm glad to hear somebody else is, uh, 
to me, you guys, uh, plenty of media coverage as far as the park goes. I've seen it and all of them, they, they, they can back off. <laughs> yeah, I got requests this time around from AP News, D, uh, NBC News, and Google, all requesting my campaign photo, my official campaign photo. And this is my third federal race. And um, I got word it wasn't just me. Um, a lot of people from like a AP sent it out to all, a lot of Green Party federal candidates. So that's that's pretty exciting news for the Green Party in general. Yeah. You know, they're not just noticing me. They're really starting to notice the Green Party itself, you know. Mm -hmm. And nobody's accusing us of where do you guys go every four years? We haven't seen you. That's what they used to say. They're mm -hmm. not really saying that this time around because we never left. Exactly. You know, and we're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the Democrats just keep shooting themselves in the foot over and over again. You know, and it's, it's I might have disagreements with members of my own party just to finish up. Mm -hmm. But you know, at the end of the day, we all have an equal voice at the Green Party. Nobody takes corporate money. Nobody takes big money. So nobody has like the NRA or APAC behind them. We all have our First Amendment right to free speech within the Green Party, you know, and our First Amendment, you know, right to voice our opinion. And, you know, so I do appreciate that about the Green Party and I hope everyone joins. Because yep. none of us are corporations and corporations aren't people. Exactly, yeah. But the socialists and the, uh, and the uh, um, uh, left need to win uh, more and more seats to make this country better. Yes. Okay, well, thanks for uh, being here uh, today. Uh, again, I'm hoping to be able to get back in touch with you in a month or so and uh, connect there. All right. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You thanks enjoy the rest there. of your day. You too. Thanks for being on. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.